The New York Islanders cruise to a 7-2 win over the San Jose Sharks. That's five in a row. We've also reached trade deadline day. What will we expect from the Islanders? All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We have got a lot to discuss on this busy Friday. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show. When we discuss whatever's on your mind, you could also follow the show on X at Locked On Isles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. And it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. Islanders win their fifth straight in San Jose Thursday night, 7-2 to two the final, for those of you who are able to stay up and watch that one. And look, I'm not going to sit here and say the Islanders played a crisp, sharp, smart hockey game. They didn't, but they didn't need to. The Sharks were, well, pretty dreadful. If you, as an Islander fan, thought that the Islanders struggled in their own zone a lot this season... Well, tonight, the Sharks may be Islanders at their worst this year. Look pretty darn good. It was not a great defensive display by the Sharks. Seven different Islanders players scoring goals in this game. And it all started off with a bad bounce goal by Noah Dobson just 19 seconds into the game. And, you know, even though at one point, the Sharks pulled to within, uh, you know, a goal, both at two to one and three to two. At no point did you feel like, oh, yeah, uh, the Sharks are going to come back and win this game. The Islanders didn't play great, but they took care of business. So many different players getting on the board. Quite honestly, only four Islanders forwards did not have points. Kyle Palmieri, Simon Holmstrom. Cal Clutterbuck, uh, and Casey Sezikis. Those are your four. Uh, And Mike Riley did not have a point. He was the only defenseman that didn't have a point. Uh, Ilya Sorokin only giving up the two goals. He looked solid. And, you know, the Islanders just did what they needed to do. Yeah, the penalty kill gave up a power play goal. Uh, that was the first Sharks goal of the night. The Islanders did score a power play goal of their own on Anders Lee, getting the final goal there in the third period. But again, uh, this game, you know, was the Islanders passing crisp? No. Were the Islanders, uh, you know, dominant or, or just playing grade A hockey? No, but they didn't need to. They did a good job of staying out of the penalty box. You just had the two minor penalties. Uh, They moved the puck pretty well. They didn't have too many defensive breakdowns, and they just applied enough pressure on the Sharks to force San Jose into mistakes. And voila, the Islanders end up with the dub. The top line, Brock Nelson, Matthew Barzal, Bo Horvat. Each of those players plus four on the night. Three assists for Brock Nelson. A goal 
for Matthew Barzal and a goal and two assists for Bo Horvat. So that line is smoking. Matthew Barzal, by the way, getting to the 20 goal plateau in this game. And it was good to see him do that. Uh, by the way, the defensive pairing of Mike Riley and Sebastian Ajo, which is usually uh, the most defensively questionable duo, they were both plus three in this game, and Ajo had his second goal of the year. Uh, five wins in a row, and, you know, to me, the bright point of this game, look, you're supposed to beat the Sharks. This is, what, their ninth loss in a row. Uh, you're, you're supposed to beat a team like the Sharks. But to me, the important thing is that even when they took a commanding lead, the Islanders did not take their foot off the gas. Uh, I mean, you know, were they playing as desperately in the third period as they were in the first two? No. But you never got the feeling that the lead was in danger. You never got the feeling that the Sharks were even going to threaten in this game. and. You know, the Islanders just took care of business, and that's what you need to see, you know, from the Islanders. You, you When you play a bad team, you know, the Islanders didn't quite play down to the level of the San Jose Sharks, but, you know, they did not take the Sharks so lightly that, you know, this became a game when it wasn't supposed to be a game. So... Taking care of business, five wins in a row. You have three games left on this road trip. And boy, oh boy, you know, the standings are getting tight. Teams making moves right now. And, and the Islanders, four points behind the Flyers with two games in hand. That's for third place in the Metropolitan Division. You're getting closer to Tampa Bay and Detroit. Uh, and putting a little distance between the Islanders and Washington and Pittsburgh and New Jersey, <laughs> even though Philadelphia and uh, New Jersey earned wins last night. So, you know, taking care of business, that's what you need from this team. And, you know, originally I had said we're on, <laughs> excuse me, we're on this four game road trip. Get me at least five points two one and one. I mean, if they can do that, I think they set themselves up very nicely for uh, coming back home. And it, it, it's going to be a dogfight the rest of the way for the New York Islanders. Uh, as far as our hero and goat of the game, you know, hero is tough. Nobody really stood out as the unquestioned hero, but I'm going to go with Bo Horvat, who had a goal, two assists, plus four, uh, you know, winning 11 out of 15 face-offs just to add to the mix. And, you know, just, just did his job. And then some uh, Brock Nelson with the three assists, obviously getting some honorable mention there. And Ilya Sorokin for just, being steady and taking care of business, go to the game. Ah, oh, man. I mean, did the Islanders have a goat in this game? Uh, I would say the Sharks were kind of the goats of the game. When you win seven to two and you kind of win going away, uh, I really didn't see a problem other than maybe a little bit of a lack of intensity early on in this game. First period, just again, a little sloppy, but. Uh, am I worried about this? Not at all. When you win 7-2, you smile, you bank the two points, and you move on, even if you did just beat, you know, one of the teams that is struggling the most in the NHL. We have got more to get to. Trade deadline is this afternoon. So, you know, the Islanders have remained 100% quiet, no moves, a lot more players have come off the board, so we're going to break down all of that and maybe what we can expect from the Islanders. We've got that and a whole lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is 
chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You will have over 35 options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. And there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So, what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Factor has two minute meals. You can fuel up fast with restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever and whenever you are. They've got things like pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. And there's no prep and no mess with Factor meals. They are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. So we've done the math. Factor, less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. More trades. Done at uh, on Thursday. We are closing in now, obviously, on the deadline. And here, you know, the Islanders are kind of running out of options. Uh, Jake Gunsel headed to Carolina uh, in, in an interesting trade. And uh, Anthony Duclair, now a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning. We had talked yesterday about that possibility so again you know interesting things going on uh but none of them concerning the new york islanders right now and you know you've already seen tarasenko vladimir tarasenko going to florida uh all, all of these different trades that have been going on uh, none of them involving the New York Islanders. Uh, you know, we mentioned Anthony Bavillier going to Nashville, where he has been reunited with Barry Trotz. Uh, Noah Hannafin now a member of the Vegas Golden Knights. We do also have, you know, a couple of players who were sat out uh, on Thursday. Tyler Toffoli uh, sat out for trade-related reasons, would the Islanders send to Foley to, uh, you know, would the Devils send him to the Islanders? I doubt it. Uh, he's 31 years old. I guess for, you know, Lou Lamorello, that's perfect to sign a guy to a five, six, seven-year extension. Uh, but again, he is a pending UFA. I can't imagine to Foley uh, being, you know, in the Islanders' sights. But again, We'll see uh, what happens. And I, I still think that the most likely thing that the Islanders do is to deal Oliver Wallstrom. And I think that would be a positive for Wally. I think it would be a positive for the Islanders. Uh, you know, Wallstrom just, he's had a number of chances. Has he had ideal chances? No. Was he treated necessarily Fairly by Barry Trotz earlier on in his career, not necessarily, but this year he had chances under Lane Lambert. He had chances under Patrick Waugh and just could not seem to get on track. So overall, I think, you know, Wallstrom could use a change of scenery. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. At the very least, I would think that's the deal that Lou Lamorello makes. Can the Islanders still use a goal scorer or two? Absolutely. But, you know, can they get a goal scorer or two? That remains to be seen. So many players coming off the board. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing 
about Lou Lamarello. I don't think anyone suspected that Bo Horvat was going to be a New York Islander a year ago. They got him. Uh, he may pull off something. You know he doesn't like rentals, so if he's going to sign or, or rather trade for somebody who's going to be a rental, he wants to know that that player is open to a, a an extension with the Islanders. And we don't know whether or not you know that's going to happen. But overall, right now, it's been all quiet on the trade front. And look, here's the bottom line. This team is playing its best hockey of the season right now during this five-game winning streak. And even at their best, I'll say it this way, can the Islanders beat any team in the league on any given night? Yes. Would they be considered one of the top four or five teams in the Eastern Conference, let alone in the NHL? No. No, they would not. Uh, I think they can make a run for the playoffs without a major addition. I think an addition might be able to help them depending on who it is, what it costs them. I do not want to see the first round pick traded for the fifth straight year. It's just not good for this team. Unless, unless you're getting, you know, a 23, 24 year old really good player who has term left and is going to stay on the island for the next three, four, five years, then I could say, okay, you're you're trading away the first round pick who usually won't play for a couple, two, three, four years, if ever, and you're getting a bona fide, young, fast, skilled type of player. Could a defenseman also be a possibility? Yeah, but I think that's less likely, especially since Robert Bortuzzo may be returning soon. Um, you know, I, I think they have numbers there between Ajo, Bolduc, Bortuzzo. You know, you got more guys than you can use. Again, maybe you trade one of those defensemen, those depth defensemen to add, uh, uh, you know, a, a middle six forward who could put the puck in the net. A lot of choices. But would it shock me at this point if Lou does very little or nothing? No. And again, here's why. The Islanders do not have, other than their first round pick, a lot of ammunition for rebuilding teams. If rebuilding teams are looking for picks and prospects, they're not getting the prospects from the Islanders because the Islanders have, according, again, every day or no, according to many, the the worst prospect pool or one of the worst prospect pools in the National Hockey League. So it, it's one of those situations where Lou Lamorello is probably working the phones, probably trying to figure out, you know, what he might be able to add to the team. Uh, but at the same time, may not have what it takes to pull off a deal compared to some of these other uh, teams who could offer more. Now, another player who's still out there who was sat out on Thursday, and it, this was with the San Jose Sharks, is Alexander Barabanov. You know, he and Duclair were sat. Duclair was traded. Could the Islanders end up with uh, Barabanov? Maybe. Uh, that I could see as a distinct possibility. But again, not anything official at this point still some names out there uh one thing to note though a lot of the teams fighting the islanders in the eastern conference have made moves and again making moves doesn't guarantee your team gets better but it does sort of say that you know they're they're working on that and trying to improve the team let's see what if anything happens with Lou Lamorello and the Islanders. And uh, again, we'll have a, a at least a, a, a clip of about a five-minute clip and a, a, a now a one-minute video uh, on YouTube as soon as any trade takes place. We have got more to get to on today's show. We will preview Sunday's game against the Anaheim Ducks, plus our Islanders' birthday of the day, 
Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a forward, a winger who was mostly an enforcer during the early two to mid 2000s. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find the right candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. Islanders and Anaheim Ducks, that game will be Sunday at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock in Anaheim. And, you know, the the Ducks, they've won three out of their last four. Now, they're going to play Friday night, tonight, at home against the Dallas Stars. But uh, they are coming off, as of now, a 2-1 to one win over the Ottawa Senators. And their only loss in their last four games was a one-goal loss against the Vancouver Canucks. Now, that being said, while they are 12 points ahead of the San Jose Sharks, in the standings, Anaheim is still 13 games below NHL 500. And when you hear the numbers, you'll understand why. 29th in the league in goals scored, 27th in goals against, 20th on the power play, 27th on the PK. That does not add up to a lot of, uh, you know, really good uh, results when you're near the bottom of the league in almost every category. Their best player right now, Frank Vetrano, he's still available. He's still out there. 29 goals, 49 points. Troy Terry has 46 points with 29 assists to lead the team. Uh, You know, this is a team that's already traded Adam Henrique. You got to watch for Mason McTavish, former Islander Ryan Strom, also a member of this team. And Anaheim, you know, Also dealing with some injuries, Trevor Zegras still on IR. Mason McTavish has missed a couple of games. Leo Carlson and Troy Terry as well. The line combinations for the Ducks, Ryan Strom, Frank Vetrano, and Brett Leeson are the top trio. Isaac Lundstrom centers the second line with Max Jones to his left, Alex Kalorn to his right. Bo Gruel is the third line center with Pavel Regenda and Jakob Silverberg on either side of him. And then Ross Johnston, the former Islander, Ross the boss, is the left wing on the fourth line. Glenn Gordon and Gustav Lindstrom round out that fourth line. Cam Fowler and Olin Zellweger are the top defense pair. Pavel uh, Mintyuv- Mintyukov and Radko Gudis are the second pair, and then Oro Vakanainen and Jackson Lacombe are the third pair. The goalies, Lucas Dostel and John Gibson. Uh, Gibson has started more games. He's 13, 20, 
and two with an 898 save percentage of 315 goals against Dostal, 351 goals against a 904 save percentage. So he stops more of the pucks he faces, but uh, gives up more goals because he probably faces more shots. He is 10, 16, and one on the season. Islanders really need, you know, you, you win this game in Anaheim and you really set yourself up for success. You then go into the last two games of the road trip and you could say, hey, if we split those two games, we had a very successful road trip and, and let's see if the Islanders can do it. Uh, again, one of the keys to victory in this game, do not play down to your opponent. That is going to be important. And the Islanders just cannot let up. And I think Patrick Waugh has done a, a good job of making sure lately that the Islanders don't do that. And now, you know, they've got to keep it up. Not going to play your best game every game, but they have the ability to beat the Ducks and keep this winning streak going. And hopefully that is something that we are going to see. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. We're a couple of days, uh, we're a day late rather on this one. Thursday was the 44th birthday of former Islanders forward Eric Goddard. The Vernon British Columbia native 6'4", 227, was not drafted and made his NHL debut with the Islanders in 0203. And, uh, you know, he played parts of three seasons with the Islanders, scored a grand total of two goals and five points, but penalty minutes, well, he had plenty of those, 97 penalty minutes in just 31 games in 03-04, 115 penalty minutes in 57 games in his last season with the Isles, that was 05-06, later played for the Flames and the Penguins, finished his Pro career after the 2011-2012 season with the Texas Stars of the AHL. Goddard played 335 NHL games, six goals, 18 points, 833 penalty minutes, add seven playoff games, two of those with the Isles, and he did have an assist, the only playoff point of his career, and he just had six penalty minutes. One of his better games with the Isles, December 19th, 2005, Islanders in Toronto to take on the Maple Leafs. Uh, Rick DiPietro starts in goal. Ed Belfour, the goalie for Toronto. And Eric Goddard gets his first goal as an Islander. Remember, he had two. Radek Martinek and Rob Collins with the assist just two minutes and 11 seconds into this game. This was a wild one. The Islanders ended up losing it. By a score of nine to six, Goddard played eight minutes and nine seconds. He had two shots and had the goal and was a plus one in this one. But uh, unfortunately, the Islanders lost both games uh, that he scored a goal for the team. Hence, one of those rare times when our Islanders birthday of the day game is an Islanders loss. We uh, really can't believe the trade deadline is here. Uh, I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is we're back on Monday. We will discuss what did or did not happen at the trade deadline. We'll also have our key takeaways from Sunday night's game against the Anaheim Ducks. So make sure you join us for that. Have a great weekend. Again, if there is a trade, we will put up a video, uh, both a one-minute video, a short and uh, probably about a five-minute video analyzing the trade. So look for that on our YouTube feed. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.